story is that once upon a time, um, babies used to die of a thing called cop death. And it was called cop death um, because once upon a time, the only babies that were ever seen dying, they were in cops because nobody bothered counting Māori babies. But cop deaths were, they were deaths. They most often happened at that time in cops when they were named this thing. In the late 50s, they got this name. They managed to separate it out as some sort of unexplained death that usually happened in a cop. Um, around about the early 80s, they began to think, well, gosh, you know, we should be having a, a closer look at these. And we had this thing in New Zealand called the New Zealand Cop Death Study. The New Zealand Cop Death Study reported in the, um, in the, in the late 80s, started in 86, uh, 87, it had one year worth of results out, 88, 89, it had um, three years worth of results out. And what the New Zealand Cop Death Study did was it took, it was called a case control study, so you have cases, and um, excuse me being clinical about this, but the cases were babies who had died, either in cops or in bed, but little babies that under the age of one who had died, and then you had control. Controls are, let's go and pick some babies who are well and healthy, and then let's try and figure out the difference between these two groups. So it's called a case control. And um, what they found was that the cases, in the cases, far more mothers who smoked in pregnancy had babies who died. And the, the figures at the time um, were between two and three times as many. So, you know, that, that's quite a lot. They also found that far more babies who didn't get breastfed died. And the figures at the time were around about one and a half. They also found that far more babies were found dead face down. And that figure was around about four or five. I think I'm exaggerating, it was about three and a half. And then they also found that babies bed sharing died at twice the rate. So they had these four big things. Three of them came out in the first year. They said that the risky behaviours are sleeping face down, smoking in pregnancy, and not breastfeeding. And then, um, and then, then a couple of years later they came out and they said, and we're pretty sure that bed sharing is one of these things. So you can imagine that what happened in New Zealand and around the world was Plunkett and other people got hold of this uh, information pretty quickly and babies got turned over like bullia. Everyone was turning over their babies. This was a new health promotion program. Of course, they were all talking about the other things. They were saying, don't smoke in pregnancy, make sure you breastfeed your babies, keep the breastfeeding going for a long time. And then they started in a big way saying, and don't bed share. Particularly you Maori mums, don't bed share. We know you fellas bed share. <laughs> Nana. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> right, you know, and, and, so, and so what happened was, what happened was, um, was that babies across the country, our death rates plummeted. And they went from around about 250 babies a year who used to die of this thing called cop death, or SIDS, and SIDS stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Oh God, I've only been there 20 years, I've got what it's <laughs> But Sudden Infant Death Syndrome plummeted. And everybody in the country is going, yes, until what we find is that the ones who are not dying anymore now are the Pākehā babies. And the ones who are still dying overwhelmingly Māori babies. Okay, and there was a, a little bit of a fall at the beginning, um, but it was kind of small. The Pākehā death rate fell by 70%. The Māori death rate fell by 15%. And so what happened around about 90, 91, 92, we started looking at these figures at the University of Auckland, uh, and in 93, the Māori SIDS prevention team was born with Lili Peti Haretuku, who we hired on South Auckland money to start moving around in the South Auckland community 
talking about these risk factors and beginning to work on what we thought at the time was about spreading information in our community. Mm -hmm. There was an idea at the time that, um, that our people were just not hearing the message. So what happened was Lily Betty and myself and another woman called Carol, um, interestingly who was an Irish woman, that she, she worked for the SIDS, the COTDES study, and um, she was the one who came, she was the whistleblower. She um, came knocking on the door of my office at the university, and um, I knew she wanted something, but I didn't want to talk to her because she was a blonde Irish woman. Oh. I want to talk to her. And, well, this is the story she tells. And she, reckons, she reckons I ran and hid from her, but she caught me one day and she told me this story, and she, the story I've just told you, that Māori babies were still dying. And so, of course, you know, how could you run away from that? And so, Carol and I started working on this thing. We got um, Liddy Petty involved, um, and Liddy Petty started going out to communities, and we followed her out into these communities. And what we heard time and time and time again is my baby died 30 years ago. Nobody ever talked to me about it. I didn't know what happened.